I'm here with Cynthia Nixon, uh, one of the best progressives in New York, I would say, and Jamal Bowman is another strong progressive. We're hoping he can pull it out tonight. Can you talk about what about his race has touched so many people, including yourself? So for me, getting involved in politics was always through education. Uh, I think Jamal is an amazing candidate on every front, but certainly the idea that we can be sending someone to Washington to represent the Bronx and Westchester, who is an educator, who is a former teacher, who is the principal of a, a middle school that he founded. Um, this is exactly the kind of, of voice that we need that we need in Washington. And I think certainly um, this district has has had its uh, previous congressperson for long enough. And, you know, I think Jamal is exactly the kind of person we want to be electing right now, someone who is a people-powered candidate, who believes in Medicare for all and a Green New Deal and uh, just all the, all, all the, all the, all the directions that we, we need this country to be moving in. Well, you, you touched on Engel there, and you know, it's New York 16. I believe he's been in Congress for 16 terms, so it could be, you know, really put a button on it. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, but he wasn't in the district basically at all as COVID-19 ravaged much of New York, especially poorer, black or browner communities. As a proud New Yorker, can you talk about how coronavirus has impacted the city? Because it's just another disaster that we've seen New Yorkers pull together through 9-11, now coronavirus. I mean, as a New Yorker, I'm proud, but you ran for governor, so I'm sure you have some opinions. <laughs> yes, I mean, I think, I think it's very hopeful and impressive the way we have shut things down and, and brought our numbers down, and we've got to obviously stick with it. I think we're looking at terrifying budget gaps in the city level and the state level, um, and I think that we need to, you know, keep, we need to change how we do things. We, when, we, when we have a budget shortfall, we can't be cutting education and, and Medicaid. We can't be looking to borrow Someone did that, someone you ran against. <laughs> yes, yes, that is, that is what's Someone who got a lot of national praise that for being is, on TV a lot. Exactly, and I think that what the governor did by being on television, I think was very important. I think he brought people accurate information and he reassured people at a time when that was really not coming out of Washington. So I think what he did was very important in terms of speaking to the, to the population, but I think by refusing again to, to raise revenue in there's so many ways available to us that would mean that we're not we're not slashing Medicaid and we're not slashing hospital budgets in the midst of a pandemic we're not slashing education when when four billion dollars is owed to schools I mean this is what we what we need to change but I think in terms of the of the Black Lives Matter protests that are that have been happening all over and and also certainly very much in New York what we're looking at is when there is a budget, sh sh you know, shortfall as there is now, we've got to we've got to say why is the why is the police budget untouchable? You know, we need to we need to we need to divest. We need to take a billion dollars out of the out of the NYPD and put it where it's where it's most needed. And for me education would be top of that list. Yeah, and, and just quickly to touch on this, de Blasio ran as a, a real leftist police reform candidate, and even he was kind of cowering. I mean, they doxed his daughter publicly and were behaving like the mafia, in my view. That's my view, not yours, but mine. Um, I, I just, I, I don't know how we can get strong progressive candidates in there. I'm not trying to be, you know, dejected, but who are gonna to stick to their guns and stand up to these interests that are so powerful, like specifically in New York, the police union. Yes, I mean, I think, I, I really hope and believe that Jamal is gonna be elected tonight. And I think we have progressive, we have so many progressives who are up for reelection that are, you know, winning by enormous margins, you know, like AOC, like Jessica Ramos, like Robert Jackson, like Uline New. Um, but I think we also have these ex very exciting slate of DSA candidates that, that I've been supporting and that, you know, they're, they're looking pretty good. Some of them are other, uh, better than others, but um, I think they've all run tremendous campaigns and it's exactly the kind of people we need to, to enter politics. Last question, just to touch on the progressive movement as a whole. You know, Joe Biden's the nominee. A lot of young leftists just getting into politics might feel dejected. What's your message to them? And do you see 
the movement still as strong as it is, even if Joe Biden is the face of the party uh, right now? I mean, I was a, a Bernie Sanders supporter. I very much wish that he was the nominee. I feel that he would trounce Trump. Uh, but I certainly will be voting for, for Joe Biden. I will be voting for whoever the Democratic nominee is. I'm looking eagerly to see who Joe Biden uh, picks as a running mate. Uh, and I think that it would be very good to have a true progressive, like, a, like an ardent progressive uh, in the White House. But I think that the thing that we have to remember is it's important to elect progressive people in every, every level of government. So we're going to keep pushing for the White House, but in the meantime, Congress and the State Senate and the State Assembly, these are all really important places where, you know, look, Julia Salazar, uh, by having one Democratic Socialist in the, in the New York State Legislature, look what she was able to do. Um, she, may have, she may have compatriots um, next session, and I think, you know, I would love to have five of her, uh, you know, in, in, in the... You avoided saying comrades as to not I trigger. I to say comrades, right, compatriots. Thank you yeah. so much, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for your time. Sure.